fun. But why are you trying to look at my pile? It's not a secret. Don't worry about they're my not, pile. They're not Ben's and Chris' secret stash. Yeah, I want you to be surprised when you see my vase. <laughs> Just because you copied me. Okay. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, along with Griff from The Hookup Tackle. We are here to talk about the beautiful month of August. Don't you love mm. August? Yeah, it's so hot. It's hot, it's humid. Uh, it's arguably maybe one of the hardest times of the year to catch fish. Today, we're gonna break down our top four-ish baits that we're gonna be throwing this month. We're gonna kind of fill you into our mindset, how we approach uh, this month and what we're gonna be doing. And maybe it'll shed some insight onto the right things to do and some crazy things to do. You ready to do it? Do it. All right, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, guys, once again, welcome back. I am Ben, the Tackle Taku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy, G Sticks Bespoke, and our other buddy over there, that is Jeffrey the King. What's up, Jeffrey the King? How's it going? You excited to hear about what I'm going to throw this month? It's the same thing as you've been throwing for the past three months. Negative. You haven't seen my pile. Oh, okay. Don't I'm more excited for no Griff. Well, Griff's always up to some kind of yeah, nonsense. Yeah, that's why I'm so. here for. All right. This no nonsense today. Really? No nonsense. No Straight way. Up. Straight up. This is. Oh, gonna, I'm checking out then. This is going to be weird. Maybe I'm going to check out too. Yeah. Maybe I should get a beer. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a long episode then. We rely on you for the nonsense. Yeah, like what the hell? I'm supposed to be normal and you're supposed to be weird. It's, it's never, in the contract. It's never nonsense with Griff. It's always perfect. Mm. So today, guys, we're going to break down the month of August and what we kind of like our main few baits that we use. Now, you know, we do this as often as we can whenever we're all around because it gives us a chance to just kind of shoot the shit with each other and brainstorm and knock some ideas off. And sometimes when I hear his thought process to what's going on, it makes me kind of think about some things differently. And that's all that we're hoping to accomplish here. Just an open discussion so that you guys kind of know what's going on inside of these heads. And, you know, maybe, maybe it'll shed some light or maybe it'll help you guys. Uh, but if nothing else, it's, you know, 15 minutes of just hanging out and shooting the shit with us. Shit okay. So here we go, month of August. You know, for hundreds of years, it's been called the dog days of August right? Because it's just kind of, it's hot and gross and water temps are kind of at their highest level. And, you know, bass being, you know, cold blooded, their metabolism and their energy level is going to be dictated a lot on that water temp, yeah. right? So when the water temp's really low, the metabolism and, and is really low and they're kind of lethargic. And then as it warms up, their metabolism heats up and they get more excited, but kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, when it gets too hot, the metabolism is high, but they're so lethargic because it's just gross. It's yeah. kind of like us, right? So like we could be in the AC and we walk outside and we're pumped for about 22 seconds. And then that heat of Satan hits us and it's like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm over it. I don't even want to go fishing. Yeah, except this week. Yeah, well, yeah, it's kind of nice right now, mm. but. It's not fishing nice Sidetrack, yeah. So, you know, basically we're all kind of dealing with the same conditions, right? We are just dealing with that really high water temp and it's going to affect the bass differently if they're in a big body of water if you're in a river or you're in a pond right so you know what type of waters are you mainly fishing i'm right now? trying to find moving water right now so okay. river the okay. river is where i'm going to spend most of my time okay so you're looking for current current kind of offsets the temperature uh yeah it kind of does it's going to give these fish somewhere to kind of cool down I guess but it's gonna have a lot of breaks in the water so they can chill out while they're cooling down also okay and they're not really sitting still so they're burning more energy 
or not burning more energy, but their metabolism is peaked, so, yep. they're, so they're eating more okay. while they're trying to stay still in the current. That's Got it. What, that's what I'm looking for. Got it. And there's a bunch of different ways we could have taken this episode. We could have made this a, a night-specific episode, because a lot of you guys are going to find yourselves fishing at night. We could have done you know a pond specific or a big body of water but this is kind of a generalization of kind of our thoughts to the month and baits that we have a lot of success with and how we're approaching it again getting back to that metabolism the bass metabolism is pretty high but because it's really hot out it's not like extended periods it doesn't seem like yeah. it seems like they're going to have little peak uh moments like the window of opportunity yeah. i would say is smaller for that peak level of feeding this time of the year and it's not always what you think mm -hmm. like so often we think all right it's 120 degrees out there we need to be out there first thing in the morning and give it two hours and you know if they don't eat they're not going to eat and how many days do we go out there and it's like dude it just ain't happening and it's nine o'clock and we go to put on the trailer and then they just start boiling or they start eating right so a lot of times as miserable as it is they eat better in the middle of the day yeah. Or the afternoon or night or morning. It could be any time. So, you know, as you guys are fishing, don't get too stuck to just going out first thing in the morning if it's not working for you. If you've gone out a couple mornings early and it's not happening, try in the middle of the day. Try early afternoon. Try in the hottest time of the day where the sun is different and the shade is different and, you know, maybe things are happening in a different way. Do you find that there's times of the day that are always good or is it always kind of changing for you? So for me, uh, fishing in the rivers, it's always going to be around the same time frame. But I know that in the lakes, they just go when they feel like going. Yeah. Right? It's, Sometimes it's, no rhyme or reason. Yeah, it never makes any sense. Yeah. So you gotta, you got to kind of spend some time on there. Like one day it'll be like, you know, first light and then mid-afternoon the next day. They just, they're just doing whatever they feel like doing. And a lot of that part that makes no sense is based on food. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times you guys are fishing bigger bodies of water, you know, lakes, reservoirs, that kind of stuff. A lot of times the fish are super keyed into a specific bait and it could be, you know, threadfin shad or blueback herring or, you know, some type of more pelagic bait fish that's out roaming around in the summer. And they may not corral them or get them kind of ready to go at the same time every day. Right? So sometimes they got to spend some time hunting and it doesn't happen when it happened yesterday morning. You yeah. know, yesterday it happened at 7 a.m. and today you're there at 7 a.m. and nothing's happening. They're out there searching, trying to find them and it might not happen to 11. Yeah. So it, it is just that time of the year, especially on bigger bodies of water where a lot of it is just waiting. Waiting for it to happen, waiting for fish that are kind of in open water to move stuff up to the top or whatever is happening. Right? Yeah. So let's dive into some bait. So why don't you start? What is, what is the bait that you are either starting with or most looking forward to throwing this month? What do you want me to grab for uh, you? The this guy? Okay. So, I'm excited no, about this one. Normally, I would, a buzz bait is where I would want to start. Okay. Uh, I want something that's on the top of the surface and it's moving fast. Okay. All right. So, well, here, let's talk about this together because okay. the buzz bait was one of mine. Okay. Okay. So,. This is, this is one of uh, the baits that's just a staple for me in August. And then you have the brand new Tekel Chop Kicker. Yeah, the Chop Kicker. I've, I've started picking this thing up. This is the only one that we have in the shop right We've right had now. this sample now yeah. for a year. And thank God we haven't lost it yet. It's kind of bounced around from all of us. Yeah. Uh, this is a brand new bait to market. You guys are going to be super stoked on this. Talk to me about the Chop Kicker and why it's replacing this for you. Yeah, so it's it's a buzz bait, right? It's just it's a floating buzz bait. And I like to work it around cover. So I'll, I'll work it and then stop, then work it. Um, I think with a buzz bait, I've talked a lot about the buzz baits that you can move slow. Mm -hmm. This one has to be moved slow. You can't burn this one or it's gonna roll. So I really like this one. And then I can just pause it without worrying about it sinking or getting caught on the cover that it's above or anything like that. Yeah. So it's a pretty interesting bait. Uh, it's getting bit like crazy. You're, you've been smoking them on it. So it's kind yeah. of a, a, would you call it kind of a, a hybrid between a plopper and a buzz bait? Yeah. Yeah, you know, plopping buzz. I don't. I don't know what to call yeah. it. Yeah, I think it's, it's closer to a buzz bait than a plopper. Yeah, but, but it it's just kind of its own unique bait because it's just it's different. It's got that funky blade in the back that's creating a churn, but yeah. it still has that kind of body that 
move side to side. Yeah. You guys will see. I know a lot of you guys are gonna pick this up and it's gonna become a staple for you. Are you finding that you're throwing this in all types of water conditions, like open water, up against the bank, around brush, not around brush? So I'm, I've am i been throwing it, oh yeah, I, I threw it at Bartlett and in the slips. Yep. And then on the outside in between the slips and they were- So fishing around docks. Yeah, they were yep. smoking it. I throw it around a lot of that grass that I have down there at, yep. the, at the Gila. Yep. Um, I throw it almost exactly like I'm throwing the buzz bait. I'm gonna try to parallel the bank with it. Yep. And then just kind of just work it in, uh, get it around the cover and then, you know, yeah. it's super simple to use. I've been enjoying it just kind of like as a bank running tool. Yeah. So the one thing that I find with this guy is that for me, and we haven't really had a chance to talk about this. For me with this, my short to medium distance casts, I'm really accurate with this. Oh yeah. But long distance casts, like when I need to make a super long cast to a somewhere specific, that thing drives me nuts. I don't know if it's the way the, the tail catches in the wind. Yeah, it's the tail. It's long casting is, is best in open water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you guys are open water casting and don't need to be super accurate, it's great. But if you need accuracy, stick to more of like a a mid distance cast. It's really accurate at just normal kind of flicks. Yeah. But once you go to bomb it, it, it has a tendency to kind of veer in certain directions. Yep. Okay. It'll, it'll go wherever it wants to go. All right, sick. So chop kicker for you, okay. buzz bait for me. For me, very simply, I will use the buzz bait under two circumstances. A, if you're fishing a lake where the water is dropping, right? So it's dropping during the summer because they're pulling water for irrigation or power or whatever. What happens is as the lake gets lower, the crawdads will get dislodged, right? So a crawdad will be living here in some rocks and that water temp or the water level drops and all of a sudden the crawdads like shit and they have to kind of come out and go back into the water. And once the bass know that that's happening, they, if this is the water line, right? They will literally nose right up on that water line and wait for stuff to come in. And as soon as they see something go back in, they're eating it. Mm. And that's a great time for a buzz bait. I could throw it on the bank and kind of drag it right in. And then as soon as it hits, it kind of goes and the bite is almost instant, right? The other time that I'll use a buzz bait is when I see dragonflies. So this mm. time of year, we're seeing a lot of damselflies, a lot of dragonflies starting to come out. And if I see any of them that have that like bluish hue yeah. to them, a buzz bait is deadly. So anything, and these are usually kind of the colors, something with some blue flake or something that's kind of like green to kind of match the dragonflies. A lot of times you just see the bass, you know, looking up at a dragonfly and a buzz bait's a great option. So there you go. There's a, a starting point for us. Okay, yeah, what's is. number two for you, sir? Uh, I'm gonna let the pop up. So if I'm doing the top water and they're not chasing the buzz bait, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna slow down. Okay. I'm gonna go with a, a popper. Okay. My two favorite ones are the Pop Max, Pop X. I like a popper that I can walk, right? Okay. I, if, if I have the option to <clears throat> pop or walk, that's what I'm gonna do because that's two totally different cadences right there, right? Yep. And then the fish will let you know which one that they want. And then once you go, once you go from there, you just catch them until they stop. So you're choosing it, the Pop Max over the Pop X purely based on size of forge, just matching the hatch kind yes. of thing? Okay. Yes. So the pop, the pop max walks amazing. So is that usually your starting point? And then if they're just not committing to it, you downsize to the pop X? Yeah. Okay. The pop X is going to be more of a, a straight pop. It does, it does walk, but it's not as amazing. Okay. It's, it's going to do a dive more than just a walk. Okay. But I mean, they both get bit and it's just going to depend on the day on which one that's going to be. Okay, so. cool. That's uh, uh, another fun way to catch them, sir. Yeah. All right, so I'm staying on top water as well. So for me, it's a walking bait. So I, I'm not a, I mean, I love the Pop Max because I can walk it, mm -hmm. but I don't have a lot of patience for walking or for popping baits. So I like things that move a little quicker. So for me, it's always one of these two this time of the year. So I'm either going with a kick knocker from Tekel or shower blows from Evergreen. Uh, I would say probably 90% of the time I'm starting with a kick knocker. This has kind of just been my beta choice for a long time and I kind of stay there. Now, this is gonna be more of an open water bait. I can certainly throw it to the bank and work it out. But this is something that I'm trying to fish over fish's heads that are active. So it's either over a grass mat, over open water, or what'll happen a lot of times this time of the year is if those fish are actively kind of hunting bait, they'll get in what we call wolf packs, yeah. right? So they'll get in like little groups of three to 10 fish and they'll kind of hunt together. And a lot of times 
they necessarily won't be feeding on anything, but then all of a sudden you, they get an opportunity to see something loud and aggressive come through and one of them will trigger and eat it before the rest of the group goes. Yeah. And if that happens, then a lot of times you can get multiple fish out of each wolf pack. And this is kind of proven to be like just a great uh, wolf pack triggering bait. I'm a sucker for white. This is white walker. This is a custom color that we do here at the shop. I usually like to start with the full size kick knocker. Uh, just because it throws the best, it gives the loudest amount of presence. But if, again, kind of like what you're doing with Pop Max, Pop X, if they're just shying away from it, then I'll drop down to the pup size or sometimes like as the, the light comes up and the sun gets to midday, sometimes I'll drop down to a pup size and go with maybe a clearer color, like a clear ice or a lime ice or something like that. Um, but this is just a great loud bait for moving. I can cover water really fast with it. It has a great movement. Um, if it's more target oriented. So I need a bait that I can move kind of on itself in real short movements and not like the big wide movements. That's when I'll go to the shower blows. So for me, that's kind of how I choose between these two. So let's say there's one specific tree off this point and I know every time I bring it by that tree, I get bit. Shower blows is a great one because I can literally just shorten up my twitches and that bait will literally just kind of walk on itself without moving out of the strike zone and can stay there longer. So that's kind of my one-two punch, kick knocker, shower blows for top water. There you go, there's, there my, there's my number two. So my third bait is going to be a deep diving crankbait. The big M has been doing it for me at the late, in the late summer. So with these, this is when I'm going to look for trees that are sitting, the treetops when they're sitting in the 15 to 20 foot. Uh, not necessarily the water being that deep, but the trees top sitting there and I'm gonna cast and I'm just gonna bang this crankbait right around the tops of those trees. Okay. And those fish, they'll just come up and, and snip and smack it. So you're looking more for like big cottonwoods or big like creek channel type trees? Yes. At a certain level and the baits just kind of ticking those, those tree tops. Yep. Okay, why are the fish sitting in those tree tops versus like on the bank or on uh, a rock pile or something like that? I believe that these fish are sitting in the trees, like lower, okay, it's just to get some shade. Probably, okay. they're probably looking for some shade. The water's a lot cooler in that depth. Yep. And then when they see a meal just banging around in there, you know, fish aren't normally just banging around in trees. They're pretty, they're pretty sleek and get through them pretty quick. They're right. Probably, they're looking at it like it's injured or something's wrong, and then they just got to eat it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I should point out that your the bait you picked was Jacucho shad. Yes. All right. You you picked the shad one. So that's your go-to summer color. I yeah. put in this PM Strike Chartreuse because that's my... When I saw you had a big M there, I just add this because it's my favorite color. Yeah, it's that's a good all. color. Yeah. Both of them have been working. Um, I just I just like to go with the natural look. Something more shaddy. Yeah. Okay. Does line diameter make a difference here? Are you throwing 20 pounds, 16 pounds? Or do you... I'm throwing this on 20. Okay. 20 pound sniper. Uh, I just feel like I have the most confidence in that line. Okay. And then when you're banging in those trees, certain lines will get nicked up really fast and I just hate retying. I'm not a retie kind of guy, so I just like to preserve my oh, lines. We know. <laughs> you lose a lot of baits mid-cast. Yeah. I should point out, we talk about this bait a lot, but if you guys are kind of new to deep cranks, this is a great one. It can be maybe a little intimidating because it's big, right? I mean, it's, it's large and, and it weighs a lot. But this is a great one to start with versus say something like a 10XD or something like that because it's a relatively easy one to crank. Yeah. So where most deep cranks are gonna have a real wide lip and they're gonna have this real wide movement like this, those wide movements when it's moving like that is what wears you out. The Big M is designed to have a little bit of that but really it's got a flashing movement. So the bait's gonna kind of track straight while it's cranking, but as it's cranking, it's kind of flashing like that, which is much easier resistance-wise to wind in. So if you guys have been looking to get into a deep crank, and really anytime they're kind of in that 15 to 30 foot zone, yeah. something like this is a great option yep. in the summer. So, all right, cool. Good number three, sir. Here we go, my number three. I'm staying fast and I'm staying high. Now. I've been throwing the big M getting to Jeff's point in the beginning. It's like, you're gonna talk about the same baits you've been throwing the last two months, right? Yeah. The, the deep crank kind of is a staple here all summer. Yeah. I love this time of the year as it starts to almost transition to fall, Okay. right? So for most of you, fall probably starts in September. For us, fall kind of starts in like 
October, yeah. maybe. But we start getting a little bit of that break from just sun and 120 every day to like a morning like today where we get some clouds. Yeah, we get a little rain, right? So we're starting to get a little bit of that shift, right? And I love, I love a skinny dipper. So this is definitely a staple for me uh, this time of the year. Again, I'm looking for fish that are either actively feeding on bait. That's my number one thing. So if they're chasing shad or, or pushing bait in the shallows, this is a great one because you can fish it around grass, you can fish it around rock, you can fish around cover, you're gonna burn it really fast and just look like bait getting away. This is also an excellent one when dragonflies are out. So if you've tried the buzz bait and it's just not getting bit, maybe it's too loud, then try a skinny dipper because it's gonna fish just underneath the surface. These two colors specifically are great dragonfly uh, imitators, Money Shot Violet and Smoke Grape. They're gonna give you that kind of illusion of those bluish kind of damselflies and dragonflies. And then if you guys just need to slow down a little bit, a bait that I've kind of been incorporating as well into my skinny dipper lineup is the Sakamata Shad. So this one is, is definitely more of a fluke style bait, so you can fish it more like a jerk bait, but it's amazing fishing fast like this. Yeah. So it has a super tight, subtle movement, but you can burn it the same way you burn a skinny dipper, but give them a totally different look. So, you know, like out here, if we were to go to Lake Pleasant today, 100% of the boats are gonna have a drop shot and a skinny dipper tied on. It's just how it is, right? So a lot of times, you know, the fish have seen a lot of the same bait. You can trick them uh, by showing them something just a little bit different. The Sakamata Shad is that for me. So there's there's my number three. I've got three high in the column things, okay? What's your number four? This guy? That guy. All right, shocker. Shocker. The master. All right, so it's summer. The catfish have already spawned, right? <laughs> but the catfish fry are getting bigger. Yep. So I am gonna go with the Nishini Lure Works Namazu, all right? Four or five inch, green pumpkin is my favorite color, but you know, your water is gonna dictate what color you throw. There's yeah. only two of them, so. Um, so I like throwing this one on a free rig. Right? Okay, I, yep. I start with a free rig all the time. Um, they're catfish this size in the water right now. Mm -hmm. So, and bass love to eat catfish. They do. It's the only fish that's in every water system in the US, right? So it's a big source of protein for them. They're, they're big, chunky, thick fish. The bass like, like to eat them. They, they eat them up like crazy. Um, if I'm not throwing it on a free rig, I'm throwing it on a double rig, like a double fluke rig, or okay. a donkey rig, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just working it like, like soft uh, jerk bait. When you're throwing it on the double rig, are you letting it sink to the bottom and fishing it close to the bottom, or are you fishing it high? No, all the way, always on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing like two or three twitches and then just letting it fall and then two or three twitches. Uh, the smallmouth really like it. When okay. I do it like that. And okay. Then, they'll just come up and they just hammer it. Yeah. It's like... And that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, most of us that are bass fishermen, we don't really study catfish. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But, and a lot of you guys may not have the luxury to live in really clear water like we do, but, you know, catfish will, they'll school. Yeah. So when they're babies, they will stay in like pods. Mm -hmm. So when you have two of them kind of going back and forth like that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's crazy. I would never think to do it. Yeah. I don't think Jeff would ever throw a double cat. Would you throw a double catfish fluke rig there, it's Jeff? It's just a double fluke rig. Yeah. It's but it's a catfish. You've thrown it's a catfish, before, though. Back when you were younger. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just the profile. It's a catfish. And, and the color. So when we were, me and Luis were out a couple weeks ago, I was looking in the water, crystal clear water, and yep. it was like they were the catfish were just going crazy under there. And I was yeah. like, oh, here in a couple weeks, I'm going to be able to throw the Namazo in there. So. Probably the number one question I've been getting in DMs over the last probably week and a half, two weeks, mm -hmm. is how do I imitate this? And it's a it's a baby catfish that bass are spitting up, right? Yeah. So this is, is probably one of the best imitators that I've ever seen. If you guys are finding that your catfish are still like in that two inch, like super, super tiny, another thing you could do is you could throw a little hair jig or something for them. Oh, yeah. So like a black hair jig or something that's just micro sized, a small little finesse jig would also be great. So any of the finessier jigs, but that four inch size is pretty small. It's so, tiny, dude. And it's easy to throw on normal gear without having to get super specialized. So right. yeah, it's tiny. All right. I think That's they a good need. One. I think they need to do a six inch, but well, it's because you're the Namazu master. But it's a good bait. It gets 
he gets bit. I agree. Okay, good number four, sir. All right, number four for me, I'm also going to the bottom. I gotta have one bottom contact thing. Yeah. So for me, I love throwing a jig. And you can, you can go a lot of different directions with jig fishing this time of the year. Getting back to kind of that deep crank, you could throw a big football jig, a big, you know, deep structure jig. But I, if I can catch them shallow, I just enjoy catching them shallow more than on structure. And a lot of guys are the opposite way. I find that this time of the year as the daylight is getting less and night is getting more, and a lot of these things are happening, uh, you know, water levels are dropping, baits getting bigger. Like, there's a lot of things kind of pulling fish shallow. So I love picking it apart with just a little compact jig. So the OSP Jig 01 is kind of my go-to this time of the year. A half ounce is usually kind of a great all around size. I'll go to five eighths if I need to work it a little faster. I'll go down to three eighths or even a quarter if I need to stay real high. But I'd say probably 90% of the time, a 14 gram or a half ounce gets the job done. The reason I like this little jig is because it's built as kind of a pitching casting jig and that's, that's exactly how I'm using this. So uh, this isn't a jig that I would use if I was gonna fish open water. That's when I would go to more of like the Hunts jig or you know, maybe, uh, you know, like a depth jig or a K-Tech or something like that. But this is a great one for just kind of pitching around the shore. You can skip docks with it. You can get really specific. If you live in a place where there's lots of grass that comes up, you can pitch holes, you can pitch lily pads. You can do a lot of different things and it's built to have a great hookup ratio on there. Take that little thing off of there. So you're gonna get a great hookup ratio, uh, but it's gonna come through all that cover as well as like a mix of rock. So if you guys are fishing riprap or you know shore that's got kind of a mix of rock and grass, it's a great one for that. I've used two different trailers on this thing. So I use either a three inch Dole Live Craw, we've talked about this a gazillion times, mm -hmm. right? But I'll also this time of the year go to like a three five beaver. So this is my normal way of doing it, the little three inch Dole Live Craw. It's just compact and tiny and looks so natural and lifelike. So your fish are feeding on craws they're gonna smoke it. But sometimes I need just a little bit more push, a little bit more body out of my bait. And by going to a three and a half inch beaver, it just gives me a little longer bait and it allows the movement to be a little more aggressive. It's not overly curly or crazy. It's just got a little bit more lift and swim to it, which I find that they absolutely smoke this time of the year in, in hot water. Plus, if I've got these for jig trailers, I can always free rig them if worse comes to worse and I've got my free rig baits going as well. Yeah. So for me, that's number four, a uh, little compact jig, a good trailer. You know, that's kind of my that's kind of my bottom contact. This jig also slides through cover really easy. This skirt that they use, yep. I mean, it just goes, it slides. Like you're fishing grass. It's not really gonna get caught up in the grass on the way down, but you know, obviously on the way up because you got your line, you got the hook, you got all that stuff. But as it's going down, this skirt right here is just gonna slide through the cover. Yeah, it collapses really well. It gets through everything. I find that it's just kind of the perfect blend of everything that I look for when I'm fishing kind of shallow and fast and kind of power fishing. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for shade, right? So a dock's gonna give them shade, grass give them shade, uh, uh, overhangs give them shade, something where I can just kind of accurately pitch. It's a really good one without going to a full size that maybe they've seen by the 20 people in front of me. Or a lot of days we're out there and there's like a thousand jet skiers. Yeah. Right, or skiers or whatever, and the fish just, you know, there's so much noise and shit that sometimes you just throw something nice and small, it's harder for them to find a flaw in it, yeah. right? And they just eat it. So for me, there's number four. There it is. All right, guys, so that is a wrap. There's our top four baits that we're gonna be throwing this month. I'd love to hear from you guys what's working in your area or things that you're excited to try or excited to use or, you know, that, you just are, are dying to catch a giant on. Jeff, I'd ask you, but I'm pretty sure I know the, well, you know what, I'm gonna ask you. What are, give me a couple baits that you're gonna be throwing this month, Jeff. The people wanna know. Um, I fish for musky or saltwater creatures in the month of August. Okay. Bass fishing in August sucks ass. Okay. So. Yeah. Good way to add, way to add to the video, Jeff. Absolutely. Way to pump everybody up. Absolutely. That's what I I'm disagree. here for. Jeez. I disagree. August Yo, you disagree. Yeah. yeah. Down All right, well, what's your musky lure of choice? Uh, oh. big bucktail, okay. mega dog, top water. Yeah, it's sick. Sounds cool. Maybe this sounds cooler actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> saltwater fishing or fishing 
surface irons and soft plastic swim baits for calicos and the kelp. Yeah. And it's fast paced, hard hitting fish. Look how happy it's he is talking about it. Just, yeah. There's just so As much better Arizona, things out there. Yeah. But yeah, we could talk in September. Okay. All right. Well, we'll enjoy your multi species uh, for the month and we'll talk to you back absolutely. in September. Yeah. All right, guys, if you have any questions on anything we covered or want to bounce anything off us, holler, drop it down below in the comments and we will get to it. Until next time, on behalf of myself and Griff and Jeff and everybody here at The Hookup, thank you guys for your business. Thank you for your support. We will see you on the next episode. Peace out, my friends.